So today I'm on my front porch and I found these at a neighborhood, huge neighborhood, rural yard sale that a bunch of people got in on last, oh, about a week ago. And I love cooking in cast iron and I wanted to get some older pieces that I could refinish and I was lucky to find them. This was very rusty, but it was very surface. So I took steel wool and just kind of touched up the, surf the surface of it. Not a lot, and there's still a tiny bit left, but that's okay. And it's actually mostly in good shape. And this is an old lodge, I don't know how old, but it's a three notch and it doesn't say lodge anywhere on it. And then I found, and thank you to the people on the Facebook forums, this is a BSR, Birmingham Steel Company, I think, skillet, and you can't even read the bottom because it's just got so much stuff built up. But... It's actually in really good shape, and it's not really pitted. They're not wobbly. You need to always make sure that they're not going to rock. So they're in good shape, but I still, I don't know how these were stored. They could have been stored in a garage or barn. Um, they could have had mice and rats running through them. They could have had something not wholesome or maybe even toxic put in them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip these to bare metal just because I don't know how they were treated. So I'm going to strip them completely and then I'm going to re-season them and I think I'm going to have two really nice skillets when I'm done. But what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to use easy off with the yellow cap you need to make sure it's this one and it has lye in it and the other thing I could do is I could make a lye bath I have the lye and it would be very easy to set it up with a a tub and a lid and such but we do have a cat and I really don't want to risk my animals so you can't keep cats out of things. They're going to find their way. So instead of that, what I'm doing is using the Easy Off Yellow Top Oven Cleaner and some plastic, black plastic trash bags. And I'm going to spray that on there and leave it for several days and I may have to reapply it, especially on this BSR because it's got the heavier buildup. This, the lodge I don't think is going to take too much because it actually doesn't have a lot of surface buildup. So since we're working with toxic chemicals, I'm going to use my soaping goggles. And I love these because they're more like glasses than the regular goggles. But they have a foam so it really, it's not 100% and it's safer to use the other type. But for soaping, I use these just because it has the foam around here. It helps prevent splashback and they fit tightly. So that's what I use. Okay, goggles on, gloves on. And the first thing I'm going to do is open up this bag. And I would go with heavier... A heavier weight trash bag, which is why I'm using these black ones. I thought about using trash compactor bags. I have them and they're very heavy. But I'm thinking if I put these in the sun, that may help too. So that's why I chose the black ones. What you want to do is put it inside the bag. Because this has lye in it, and there's a little bit of wind, I'm going to be very cautious because not only could it get on my skin, it can also 
well, it will have fumes and you don't want to breathe those. So what I'm going to do now is shake it up and then we're going to spray the inside of this pan and don't breathe the fumes. We're even going to spray the handle. Now, I'm actually going to use the glove, the, the trash bag to help me turn it without grabbing that lye. But you want the lye totally covering this. So now, and I think you can see that. You can see how much buildup there is. And there's probably imprinting on this, but you can't read it because of the buildup. But you want to get all the surfaces. Spray it well. I'm sorry if I'm blocking the way, but I'm just trying to be cautious. And I'm not sure if that's showing up on the camera. You can already see this the foam getting kind of discolored as it's eating away at that buildup. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull this bag up and I'm going to lightly tie it just hopefully to keep it from getting open accidentally. But I don't want to tie it tightly. And this is primarily to keep my cat safe and any other animals that might come around. And then I'm just going to tuck the loose parts underneath and I'm going to put this out in the sun. Now for pan number two. Now I'm going to close these up and put them out in the sun. And I'll come back in a couple days and check them. This one may be ready. But it might not. We're just going to have to wait and see. And if the, they are not ready, then what I'll do is I will spray them again and leave them out for another few days. This is probably a slower process than electrolysis or a lye bath. I'm willing to take the time with this. It's worth it to me. So I'll bring you back in a few days and we'll take a look at it then. I put these cast iron skillets out in the sun with the Easy Off Yellow Top Cleaner on Wednesday. Today is Saturday. So I went out today and I've already rinsed these off because I can't rinse them in my sink because we're on septic. And you're dealing with lye, you really don't want that going down your septic. So I went ahead and sprayed them off outside and in a, just a couple minutes in the sun, between the sun and the wind, it had dried them off. And I lightly scoured them very lightly with some steel wool. So this is the Lodge Skillet and it's in pretty good shape. It's pretty well cleaned off. I'm going to wash it just a little more in the sink where I have a little more control. This one is the BSR and I think I am going to, well, I know I'm going to have to reapply the Easy Off and leave it out there longer. I don't know if you can see, there's really still a lot of gunk on that and on the back side, although you can now see the center, so that's good. 
So I'm going to just lightly clean that a little more to see what comes off. But then it's going to go back outside for a longer cleaning time. So let me scrub this one and let's see what we've got. This is the Lodge pan and it has come pretty clean. I'm going to make sure that it's dry because I don't want any flash rusting. But now what I'm going to do, I have the oven preheated to 200 degrees. And there's some very minor pitting in here, but I'm hoping that the seasoning will take care of that. So this one's going in the oven upside down at 200 degrees. And what I want to do, you need to make sure if you have a gas oven, preheat your oven first to 200 degrees. Then this is going to go in there until it reaches 200 degrees. In the meantime, I'm going to work on the BSR. Now I have a very hot pan. It's at 200 degrees. So now I'm going to take, and I'm using Crisco. You can use whatever oil you want, but I decided I'm using Crisco. And now that this pan is nice and hot, we're going to completely coat it well with the Crisco. Now I'm using the blue shop towels for this because they don't have lint. But you want to get the handle, you want to get all of the surfaces because you don't want to get any more rust. So put down a good layer. And did I say this pan is hot? All right, we've got a nice coating on the inside. I'm gonna double that over again. And we're gonna do the same to the bottom. Again, making sure you get every bit of it completely coated. Make sure you get the handle, all of the sides. Now I'm going to take another blue towel and go back and wipe off as much as I can. Doesn't seem to make sense, but if you could see closer, this pan absorbed a fair amount of that Crisco because it was heated. So now I want to take off the excess because I don't want the Crisco to pool on it as it's seasoning for the two hours it's going to go back in the oven for. So thoroughly wipe it down And what that would do, if, you, if it pools, it's going to leave ugly blotches. And if I'm going to go to this much work to get this pan beautiful and non-stick, then I don't want ugly blotches. Alright, this is what it looks like. It just slight sheen to it, but you no longer have it coating the surface. This is going to go back in the oven, upside down, and I am going to raise the temperature to 300 degrees and set a timer for 15 minutes. And we'll come back and see what's next. All right, it has been 15 minutes. And now what I'm going to do is go back and wipe it down again and get any grease that's pull pooling on it. So just thoroughly wipe it down. And it's very hot. So 
so be very careful. So it's just very slightly shiny and that's what we want. So this is going back in the oven upside down and I'm going to raise the temperature to 400 and leave it there for two hours. And then once that's done, I'm going to turn the oven off and let it cool completely until that cast iron skillet is cool. So we'll come back when that's all done. This was in the oven at 400 degrees for two hours and after that I let it sit in the oven. It's still warm, that's why I've got the gloves on, but ideally you let it sit till it's totally cool. This will protect it short term, but I am going to season this again because this drank the oil. So I will re-season it and I will also be seasoning the other one once it's ready, but already it's just got a very, very smooth surface. Well, this is how the BSR cast iron pan looks after round two. I rinsed it off. I scrubbed it where I thought I could get things off. And the inside is mostly done, except here by my hand, right through here, and a small spot there. Just some minor stuff left to get. Now on the bottom, this still, most of the bottom is clear. There's some buildup here, and right around the very edge of the inside of the ring, there's still buildup. But the sides, the sides are still very much caked. And this was after rinsing and scrubbing. So this is going to go back out with more of the Easy Off Oven Cleaner in a black plastic bag. The other pan I am going to put through another round of seasoning today and this time I'm going to do it on the grill because there's not too much wind and that way it doesn't heat up my kitchen. So update and I'll bring you back after the next one. Well it's been probably a couple of months since I started cleaning this cast iron pan. It was really bad shape. It was seasoned at one time but it had been sitting out in storage somewhere and it was who knows what was done in it I picked this up at a yard sale so I don't know the top had a little bit of buildup the bottom was heavily crusted and it wasn't a good one so since I didn't know what had been done in this pan I thought the best thing to do was strip it down to bare metal and re-season it. And it turned into a pretty big job. The inside was stripped pretty quickly. And the method I used was the Easy Off brand oven cleaner with the yellow cap, which is lye. And I sprayed it and left it in a plastic garbage bag in the sun for several days. That was the first one. After that, I would clean it off, scrub it with steel wool, and then recoat it with the Easy Off. And I did that several times. And finally, this last time, it took off all of that heavy built up. And we're gonna call it seasoning, but to me that's not a seasoning. What is a seasoning? is very light coating of oil that gives it the non-stick finish but it doesn't have to have all that buildup. 
This is the other one I got at the same time, and it was done pretty quickly, and I was able to re-season it. And you can see the difference. That is a nice seasoning. So today I'm going to work on the seasoning, and I may not finish it today. It may take me several days because it's already late in the day, and each time you season it takes a few hours. All right, I've had this in the oven for a little while. The oven is set at 200 degrees, and I wanted the pan to come up to 200 degrees. So now what I'm going to do is put my coating on it. And what I'm going to use, my first one, I just used Crisco. This one, I bought something called Buzzy Wax. And I found this through Facebook forums for cast iron. And it's a blend of grapeseed oil and canola oil, which both have high smoke points, and beeswax. So, I have been using this on my other pans, and so far, I love it. So, I'm going to just unwrap a little bit. And because the pan is hot, I can just slide it on like that. So now I'm going to turn it over, and you can see the difference already. This is where I put the wax, and this grayish surface, this is with nothing on it. And the beeswax does help this make pucks better, I guess, for shaping, but it's still pretty soft. And yes, I could make this myself. I have, well, I don't have canola oil, but that's easily available. I do have the beeswax and grapeseed, but I figure this way I'm helping out a small business that basically they're, they're just like us. They're out there making, taking care of their own homestead. And if they can make a little bit, then I want to support that. All right, I'm going to put this in the oven. And now I'm going to turn up the temperature to 300 degrees and put this back in there. And I'm going to put it upside down now that I have the oils on it. All right, I put this back in the oven and I set the timer for 15 minutes after I raise the temperature to 300 degrees. And the reason I set the timer is because if you just walked away and left this in there as is, you're going to have all kinds of little grease splotches when you're finished, which isn't what we're looking for. So what you do is after the 15 minutes are up, and this has gotten very hot, so be careful. Now we're going to go, we're going to go across this really, really well. And what I've read is people say, wipe off the oil like you're allergic to it. So you just really want to wipe it down. There's oil in there. So you can see it's shiny, but it's not shiny like this. So we just keep going and wipe off as much as you can. And it may seem like that's a mistake, but it's not. Because after a couple of coats of this, this is going to have a beautiful shiny surface and it won't have any dark blotches. So go ahead and wipe it down like you're allergic to it. Carefully because like I said it's very hot. Now I'm going to put this back in the oven. I'm going to raise the temperature to at least 400, maybe 450, upside down, and we're going to leave it for two hours. And then when that's done, turn the 
temperature off and let it sit until it's completely cool. So we'll be back in a while. All right, this is mostly cool. It's still warm. And it would have been better to let it totally cool in the oven, but I had to get my sourdough bread in, so I went ahead and took it out. But I want you to see the difference. It still needs probably two coats, two more times of seasoning. But this is just beautiful. So now I'm going to continue seasoning this and then I'll be using it all the time. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this give me a thumbs up, subscribe and share and be sure and hit the little notification bell. God bless and we'll talk again soon.